ओम भूरभुव स्वत सवितौरवरेण्यम बर्गो देवस् दीन धियो यो न प्रचोदया ओम शांति 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 नमस्कार माय डियर फ्रेंड्स दिस टॉपिक सीम्स टू बी समथिंग वेरी न्यू फॉर मेनी पीपल but dear friends this is part and parcel of the life of sadhakas who are undergoing the spiritual sadhanas for self realization and liberation because bioelectricity is present in human body and it influences in many ways in the spiritual field this video number 4 starts with by electric conduct bio electric conductivity of clothes although inert by nature on account of their proximity to the body clothes are very much subject to bio electric charges wearing borrowed garments is like eating the left or food from someone's plate a fable in scriptures narrates a story about the bad consequence of wearing borrowed garments on account of exchanging her garments with her maid devyani the daughter of guru brahaspati was made to suffer the humiliation of mistaken identity of a slave sometimes people ignorantly rejoice in acquiring fashionable but cheaper second hand clothes they are hardly aware of the possible harmful influence of such clothes on physical and mental health of the wearer whereas infection or contagion likely to be carried from these garments could be taken care of using disinfectants if an immoral person had worn these garments the negative charges therein cannot be eliminated by any physical means the wearer remains disturbed and influenced by their polluting effects while wearing them so there is no shame in wearing out of fashion garments even fever clothes than necessary but never second hand or borrowed clothes one may argue that by this logic the garments being used or discarded by a non pious person should be pure and beneficial for health of anyone but who could tell with certainty that the apparently good person is not secretly immoral and is suffering from some physical or mental ailment besides self respect to demands refraining from using borrowed clothes why should one eat or wear something discarded by another person however exalted the status of that person be garments prepared from silk and wool absorb little bioelectric charge sometimes because of social compulsions it becomes necessary to associate with groups of people charged with disturbed emotions for example in funeral processions at cemeteries hospitals bars and casinos on such occasions silk and wooden clothes serve as effective seeds exposing clothes to bright sunshine and boiling for a long time normally cleans the superficial bioelectric pollutants of garments in course of daily routine in course of daily routine physical contact to we acquire negative bioelectric charges from people washing the clothes daily in hot water and exposing them to bright sun can neutralize these charges chapter 13 thoughts are electro biomagnetic waves thoughts are electro biomagnetic waves thoughts are electro biomagnetic waves 
perpetually arising in the mind. These are produced by the bioelectricity generated in the powerhouse of the inner self. In the event of death, on departure of soul from the body, the individual ceases to think. A thought is not merely a word given to an abstraction, concept or feeling. Thoughts have dimensions with specific properties detectable by instruments. One such instrument is polygraph, the lie detector, which detects and presents graphics of thoughts in different states of mind. At each moment, waves, fronts of thoughts are being prepared from the mind in the outer space. Like radio waves, it is possible to transmit and receive thoughts by way of telepathy. The dimensions of thoughts floating in the space can be known and interpreted by yogis through extrasensory perception. The currents of thought waves have wavelengths and frequencies like those produced in waves of water. However, there is a difference in their magnitude and process of propagation. The waves produced in a pond of water on earth pan, uh, earth pan and die out at the periphery of the pond due to the resistance of earth. On the other hand, the thought waves which are perennially in propagation in the infinitude of space akash are never lost. Since each thought has its own specific characteristics, instead of being amalgamated into an undifferentiated mass, it forever retains its independent identity and existence. Nevertheless, similar thoughts or ideas tend to be attracted from far and wide in space and form intense clusters. The phenomenon is like water vapor evaporating from different reservoirs conducting to form clouds. When a thought arises, its frequency in the mind of the thinker interacts with those of the masses of similar thoughts, collective ideospheres in the space. The individual thought, the small magnet of ideosphere of the individual enters the field of the large magnet, the mass of ideospheres, in this way by extrasensory perception. Commonly understood as intuition, one comes to know many new aspects of the subject being deliberated upon. The information comes from pre-existence in the collective mass of ideas, fears of knowledge, ideas and experience of people who had studied, pondered over and elaborated upon the subject in the past. While thinking about activities of philanthropy and welfare, one has a feeling of great peace and contentment. This satisfaction is derived from the collective experience of people who had performed similar deeds in the past. On the other hand, emotions of anger, animosity, sin and deceit invite consequent reactions from past creating stress and restless in mind. For instance, one experiences peace and happiness at places of worship, whereas the environment of area charged with sorrow such as cancer hospitals or cemeteries make one feel depressed. Many great holy persons perform ardent ascetic exercises in seclusion for creating an ambience for the welfare of mankind. Apparently, they are not seen actively engaged in any welfare activity. Nevertheless, the high frequency of virtuous thoughts transmitted by them in course of deep meditation helps the masses to 
an extent not feasible by collective physical endeavor of a million people. In India, many sages have been practicing devout asceticism in the solitude of caves of mountains since ages. It would be fallacious to assume that they are doing it for a personal benefit of deliverance or entry into heaven after death. As a matter of fact, these great men strive to make the bioelectric fields, ideospheres of their spiritual thoughts sufficiently strong to enable the thought waves being telecast by them easily receptacle by the minds of common men. Mahatma Gandhi was aware of the force of a powerful ideology. He often said that the great revolution for independence of India did not require a large number of people. The objective could be achieved by a few having sufficient inner strength. Atma pays for propagating the ideology among us, the masses. One benefits by thinking good. Similarly, one suffers the consequences of bad thoughts. Persons habituated to destructive thinking should know that they are inviting similar thoughts from space which would one day overwhelm their life with misfortune and misery. An evil or negative thought always produces an adverse reaction in other persons. It contributes to the pollution in the universal thought bank. Hence, one should remain ever vigilant about an unethical thought trying to sneak in mind. The moment an unholy thought crops up in mind, it should be immediately diverted or pushed out by more intense constructive thought. Indeed, the most remarkable service of mankind is to always think positively and about welfare of other persons, endeavor accordingly and spread similar thought ways. Chapter 14 Belief is the key to success. Mind is perpetually flooded with waves of thoughts. Generally, these are impulsive or casual thoughts of small duration, creating little impact on mind. On the other hand, serious and prolonged contemplation or pondering on a subject enters deep cores of mind giving birth to convictions. When an opinion is accepted by mind as a certainty or unquestionable fact, it produces miraculous results. There is an ancient saying in Sanskrit, Viswasu Faladaya Kaha, meaning a deep-rooted staunch belief is bound to produce desired results. The phenomenon is illustrated in the relationship between a doctor and his patient. The best prescription of a well-known medical specialist sometimes fails to relieve a patient, whereas the same patient gets immediate relief by a placebo administered by a quack. The reason lies in the staunch belief of the patient in the efficacy of the medicine and expertise of its prescriber. Taking cognizance of this fact, medical practitioners today regard the confidence and positive attitude of the patient as an important factor contributing to recovery. Although the patient generally gives credit for his recovery to the medication, the role of treatment in healing an ailment is not sufficient. Major factor responsible for cure is his own conviction and attitude. The miraculous power of faith. Faith is another name given to a staunch unquestioned belief in qualities of one's role model. Since God is omnipresent but invisible, 
people all over the world use a variety of representations or symbols for his worship. They see God's presence in natural places of pilgrimage such as rivers, hills, rocks in man-made structures, holy books, idols, charms, though in inanimate these centers and symbols of faith benefit the deliverance by fulfilling their desires in answer to prayers. The miracles produced by these in inanimate objects defy any explanation how does an inert object incapable of protecting its own self from desecration provide desired fruit to its believer. In this respect, after intensive research on spirituality, a person having extra sensory perception has found the explanation to this phenomenon. The interaction between faith of the follower and the object of faith follows physical laws of science of elasticity. When a ball of elastic material is thrown against a wall, it rebounds back to the thrower with the force proportional to the force of its projection. Faith and devotion in the believer are produced by the power of the great bioelectric power generator imbibed in the soul referred to as Atma Shakti or inner strength. While praying the faith of the devotee associated with the force of soul power strikes the revered idol and bounces back to the believer as desired results in the material world. In earlier chapters it has been discussed how desires produced strong bioelectric fields capable of interacting with the material world. There is a tale in the epic Mahabharata about a boy named Eklavya who was denied admission in the military academy of Guru Dronacharya. Eklavya had great faith in Dronacharya, determined to learn archery from him only. He did he built a statue of the Guru in the solitude of a forest and with full devotion began practicing in the presence of this idol. As though the latter itself was Dronacharya guiding him in person, his faith was so <laughs> strong that the telepathically that he telepathically received the necessary guidance directly from the experience stored in the memory of the Guru and became greater expert than the disciples of Dronacharya trained in the academy under his personal supervision. Such was the miracle of Eklavya's faith in the idol. The expertise acquired by him was the result of his strong faith generated by his inner strength which when projected at the idol of the Guru made later work as living Dronacharya. Chapter 15 Significance of a Guru in Pursuits of Spirituality Books on Science of Yoga and Spirituality unanimously glorify the role of Guru in pursuits of sadhana. There are many volumes of spiritual text and treaties composed in adoration of Guru. The mystery behind miraculous grace of the spiritual potentials of a noble Guru emphasized in the scriptures is the strong faith of the disciple in his Guru. The faith of the disciple returns back to the disciple with proportionate success. The individual being accepted as Guru by the disciple is also a human being 
vulnerable to some flaws or weaknesses. Hence, when an ordinary person or a somewhat enlightened person is revered, it is because the believer has a strong faith in that person. History tells us that the divine sage Dattatreya had acknowledged 24 beings as his guru. Many among us these were uneducated individuals, some even birds and animals. Perhaps none among us these were spiritually more enlightened than Dattatreya. None knew about the significance of a guru or was even aware who had given them the status of a guru. Nevertheless, because of his own attitude of learning from the good that dwells in others, Dattatreya could derive as much benefit from these gurus in his spiritual progress as one could have had by interacting with an acknowledged guru. In today's materialistic environment, faith and devotion have become subjects of mockery. Attempts are made to find blemishes in sacred things and faith and belief are being regarded as rigmaroles of ignorance. Let us not blame persons holding such opinions. How can the human body, which is composed of elements of matter, which vulnerable to change and decay, escape illusions while endeavoring to know the truth? Truth is immutable. Therefore, the only truth is God. The rest perceivable by senses of body is illusion, an ever-changing mutable phenomenon. Therefore, how can an idol carved out of stone be a representation of God or a human body composed of flesh and bones be a guru of some disciple? Why should one who is not perfect or devoid of errors be regarded as a guru. The spiritually enlightened person knows that these are only means and not the ultimate aims. The soul of the individual itself is the actor, subject in its own gradual evolution or degradation in course of its journey towards ultimate salvation. All external objects merely assist this process. However, the fact cannot be overlooked that it is impossible to achieve this goal without adaptive means. Chapter 16 Impact of Mental Images When an information or concept about existence of a paranormal body at a place is believed as a truth, it takes a shape as a vague imagery in mind. A firm conviction in its existence takes this visual image deep down in the subconscious levels of mind and gives it visible dimensions. This in a nutshell corresponds to personification of objects of faith as deities, ghosts or spirits. Ghosts and spirits may exist in subtle bodies and their presence may be felt in some ways. Nevertheless, in most cases, virtual images of our own convictions appear as ghosts. In a pitch dark night to a person convinced about the presence of a ghost on a banyan tree, branches, twigs and hanging roots of the tree would take the shape of a living ghost. A very strong conviction of the believer may even impart faculties of speech and movement to this imagery. It, it is seen that in most cases the phenomenon of haunting influences those persons who believe in their existence. In many occult practices of Tantra, such as Marna, Mohana, Uchhatana, Vasikarna, Stamban, etc., invisible forces are used for helping or harming people. A few among us, these appear being enacted by some alien, invisible individual. The actor in such cases is not some spirit but a 
virtual robot created by the will power of the occultist in india many yogis have the potentiality of creating such shadow bodies chaya purusha using the particles of their own bioelectric current potentiated by power of will having been structured with sub microscopic elements such bodies have an access to information unperceivable by physical means in spite of their intangible body these are capable of performing some task like any physical being sometimes even more effectively these paranormal images having paranormal capabilities tantras like karma pisachini yakshini divya swapna etc are products of focused use of effulgence of bio energy of accomplished tantra experts the potential of these shadow bodies is commensurate commensurate with the strength of conviction acquired by them through strenuous tantra exercises of mind in the moments of devotional ecstasy some idol worshipers perceive appearance of their revered deity as a living person before them such phenomenon as appearance of deities as living persons perception of divinity in some form as divine light sound or words superhuman powers in certain persons are clear indications of bioelectricity working in human body chapter 17 experiments in telepathy two individuals concentrating to exchange their thoughts telepathically at a fixed time can achieve remarkable progress within a few days practice in the initial stages itself the telepathically communicated information would be found containing quite a few basic elements of the thoughts the clarity and comprehensibility of the messages would commensurate with the purity of mind character and degree of concentration ancient indian history is full of events describing telepathic communication between people in modern times too feasibility of this methodology of wireless communication can be successfully established without any instrument striving further one may even acquire clear wines the paranormal faculty of distant vision modern science makes use of radio waves for transmitting and receiving images between distantly located places purity of character ability to deeply concentrate and practice can enable anyone to see events taking place at far away places by extra sensory perception distant distant vision of events requires focused imagination and mental concentration at that place in solitude during the initial stages of practice the images appear hazy and somewhat different from actuality with progressive evolution of the inner self with virtuous development of personality the clarity and authenticity of the images increase the energy that makes telepathic communication and distant vision possible is human bioelectricity the basic requirement for such extra sensory faculties is purity and virtuosity with the help of our own virtues we can attract virtues present in other persons and with the enhancement of our virtuosity derived sufficient benefits from the power inherent in our 
बायोइलेक्ट्रिसिटी चैप्टर एटीन रोल ऑफ बायो इलेक्ट्रिसिटी इन रिलेशनशिप बिटवीन अपोजिट जेंडर द बायो इलेक्ट्रिसिटी फ्लोइंग थ्रू मैन एंड वीमेन क्रिएट्स बायो मैग्नेटिक फील्ड हैविंग अपोजिट पोलिटी इन देयर बॉडीज दिस अपोजिट पोलिटी बिटवीन मेल एंड फीमेल बॉडीज is manifested as the natural attraction between the two sexes during youth this biomagnetic field is stronger because of increased biological activity of the body unilaterally these fields are inconsequential for either sex but a disciplined physical contact benefits both in the development of their physical and mental potentialities all over the world single men and women face more health problems and generally have lesser longevity than married couples the bodies of widows and widowers often appear lusterless and unhealthy they are usually found complaining about some personal ailment or other let this statement of fact should not startle the believers in virtues of sex restraint and chastity chastity the point being made here pertains to complementary nature of the male and female biomagnetic fields and its benefit it should not be considered as contradiction of the advantages of abstention from sex for long periods or throughout life neither are the above facts contradictory to the advantage of celibacy advocated by science of body chemistry sarir shastra abstaining from sex for long periods built up tremendous creative energy in body persons having exceptional power of will craze and perseverance may undertake special exercises of yoga for harnessing the incredible vital inherent power in and in the sex element various shakti for creativity and use it for achieving excellence in any field be that athletics scholarly studies spirituality etc they have the option of following celibacy for long periods however such cases are rare in the present times the laws of body chemistry in general indicate that on an average married life is necessary for supplementing the physical and emotional requirements of either sex ayurveda ancient indian medical science and other traditional disciplines of meditation tell that suppression of sexual urge by an ordinary man or woman for a long time makes the person prone to many diseases and psychological disorders it is clearly seen in the deteriorating health of widows and widowers experience shows that a normal happy conjugal relationship is advantageous for both sexes there is nothing wrong in having sex the harm is only in the abnormality of extra marital sexual relationships erotic thinking and excessive sensual excitation one who does not know baking a cake would spoil it or prepare a tasteless cake one bitter cake does not prove that all cakes are bitter sexual intercourse involves an exchange of vital energy between the two bodies in course of sex man absorbs the same amount of vitality as his female partner hence matrimonial alliances between a man and a woman women of more or less same age are recommended with advancement in age the capacity of absorption of vitality increases as it is as a large tree draws in nutrients from around a large area benefit it on the ground and does not let the small plants grow beneath it in course of the act of sex the older person draws out the vitality of the younger partner according to ayurveda coitus with a younger woman increases the vitality of man 
On the other hand, an older woman is benefited on having sex with a younger person. Quietus between persons of same age protects vitality of both. Through experience, man had known this fact since ancient times and has been usurping it to his advantage. In the male-dominated society of medieval times of cultural devolution, man had cleverly kept it as a guarded secret from women kind to keep it from revolting. Many societies do not approve of marriages of a boy with an older girl through a, though a difference of a year or two in age of husband and wife is immaterial from the above point of view. Marrying a younger woman increases the chances of greater longevity for her husband and his health too shows improvement, whereas the wife loses vitality and ages prematurely. In Polygamous societies men take advantage of this factor for their health and longevity. In certain primitive societies, parents give their young daughters in marriage to much older men for monetary considerations. It is a very cruel and despicable practice. Throughout her life, the helpless woman is sucked out of her vitality bit by bit by her parasitic husband. It is seen that young wives of old men frequently fall sick. The poor women even do not know the actual reason for their failing health. For an old man marrying a young girl is like forcibly de depriving a poor man of his hard earnings. Unfortunately, many males among us, the humankind, are sacrificing natural justice at the altar of self-interest. In course of coitus, excitement enhances the bioelectric energy level of the participants and an inter in transmission of energy takes place between the two bodies. The most powerful and vital energy of human body is that related to reproduction at the moment of orgasm. This internal energy is released and mutually absorbed through the private parts of the participants. Since human bodies are full of biomagnetic charges, even sharing of a bed may incite opposite sexes to make sensual love. Repeated excessive excitement of organs of sex by quietus and lack of sleep both have a harmful effect on health. Hence, while going to sleep, it is advisable to lie on separate bed. Consequently, reciprocal transformation of personalities, qualities, traits and temperaments. Guru Karma Sobhava takes place. The bioelectric particles mutually absorbed by men and women incessantly seek a reunion with their parent source, like a large magnet tending to attract the small magnet. The process is like a traveler to an alien land frequently longing to return to his native place. This inner biomagnetic activity itself finds an expression as the conjugal love. Sexual intercourse makes this attraction stronger on account of presence of each other's bioelectrical particles in their bodies. The emotional attachment between a lover and a beloved is much stronger than that between individuals having other relationships. The phenomenon the phenomenon is also illustrated in the love of parents for their offspring. Since a part of the bioelectric fields of bodies of parents goes into building the ideal sphere of the child attraction between the two produces emotions of mutual affection. Mother's contribution being more than that of father, maternal love is more strong in all species. Free, healthy interaction between male and female members of the society gives pleasure and promotes mutual understanding. Certain 
primitive societies do not approve of interaction between married couples in public places. It should be understood that the practice of using a wheel is harmful for the psychological development of a person. In many parts of the world, men and women traditionally work in separate groups, not with standing cultural constraint. They should at least have a freedom of conversation with their family members in the confines of their home. For a healthy ethical cohabitation, maximum freedom and convenience of interaction between men and women is necessary. On special occasions, embracing in public places too may be permissible. However, sexual contact should never cross ethical limits and norms and discipline of married life. Thank you for watching this video. Please like, comment and share the video and subscribe the channel. Namaskar my dear friends.